Hey there, welcome back to Coding at Home with the Code Hub. Hey there, I'm Matt with the Code Hub. Uh, welcome back. Uh, before we even start today, I want to say I'm very sorry about Friday's session. Uh, I watched some of the, the live video back and it was painful. It was really hard to follow. Um, the, the frames were dropping a lot, so you, you missed a lot of the interactions that we had with the, the actual application. So what we're going to do today is go over a lot of what we went over on uh, Friday um, and, and try to take our time and, um, and ease through it. I, I understand it's my inclination to kind of speed through things because um, I don't want you to be bored, but th this stuff is all brand new to you guys. Um, it's very cool, so I want to make sure that you get it. So we're going to play around with Reality Composer some more today. We we're going to do that anyway. Um, so let's get going. Let's go back to, to Reality Composer and we're going to start playing around with our own augmented reality scene. Um, we're going to see how far we can get with the rocket ship and play around with a few things and look at some of the things that may have gone wrong for you um, that maybe you didn't understand why it went wrong and we can try to work through them on air. So let's check it out. All right, so here we are. We've got our iPad up and running. We're going to jump into Reality Composer because that's where we're going to spend our day today. Uh, you can see I've got the content library up uh, already. This is where we picked our rocket from the other day. But let's go and look and find where we got that from. So we're, I'm going to start from scratch. I'm actually going to go tap on that guy. I'm going to delete it. Now, if we look... When we start Reality Composer for the first time, if I hit this back arrow, I'll see something like this. And all I'm gonna do is pick a hit plus. Actually, let's start with a whole brand new project. Because at the very beginning, it's gonna offer us a choice. It's gonna say, choose an anchor. So horizontal is gonna be for like our desktop that we'll go over in a second. Um, we'll look at a vertical one, maybe a little bit later in the week where we can attach something to a wall um, the image based one is amazing and we'll definitely be playing with that a little bit later as well. And then we have the face option for, um, for using the front face and camera, especially on those nice, the iPhone tens and above, um, you can do some cool stuff with that, but we're, we won't touch any of those. We're going to mess pr primarily with the horizontal, uh, anchor, the vertical one and the image one. So I'm going to tap on horizontal here. And immediately what it's done is it's set me up in my scene. It's given me one little object here, or actually two little objects. So I'm going to pinch and zoom in. And I've got a cube to start with. So if I tap on this cube, I can see I have some properties over here. This, this pane over here is our properties pane. Um, you can highlight, hide it or show it by tapping on this icon here. It looks like a little um, sprocket wheel with a cube in the middle. And right now it's highlighted in blue. If I tap on that again, the blue highlight around it goes away. And so does my pane. So I can tap on this one again. And now I can see details about my object. So I can see its position on the X, Y, and Z axis. That's right. I am American. It is Z, not Z. We can see the rotation. We can see the change of scale. So if we drag this up and down, we can shrink or grow our cube. We can change the different types of material here. Let's scale it a little bit so we can see what happens when we change our materials here in the look section. And you'll notice these little arrows here. If we tap on those, it'll hide. If we, if we want to just focus on one particular thing, maybe accessibility, we want to make this, make it so that people who, who um, have trouble seeing or trouble hearing, that they have a way to navigate our interface. Um, we would go and add a label, add a detailed description of our, our cube that exists in the scene so that when someone with the accessibility features turned on on their iPad go to view our scene, they would be able to hear a description of what it is is being composited into the real life scene. So I'm gonna hide my accessibility for now. I've got physics. I've got a switch here where I can toggle it on or off and say whether or not it participates in physics. And we'll take a look at that in a little bit. 
But primarily what I care about now is the look. So let's play around with our material. We have a bunch of different options here. We have the material. And you can imagine from our, our lights, camera, code playgrounds and more, these are properties on our, on our object. So we have the material. We can assign a glossy paint, matte paint, and you can see the look changes just a little bit over here. Car paint, we can make it aluminum or brass, gold. Maybe let's have a, a nice gold cube there. We can change the width. We can change the height. Maybe we'll make it a little gold brick here. We can change the depth. We can change the bevel radius so we can make it rounder or less round. So here, let's make a little gold brick. Now, if this was what I, my goal, I wanted to make a gold brick and place it in my room, uh, what I could do then is say, all right, cool, I'm going to actually hide this properties pane. You don't have to, but I'm going to hide it. I want to view it in my room. So let's tap on the AR button here. See, it's right, right here in the toolbar. When we tap on it, it turns blue. Now, I also have that select to edit piece in there that I have to get rid of. So I'm going to bring up the iPad and move it. Oh, there it is. Wow, that is a massive gold bar on my desk. Now, if I touch the screen with two fingers and then pinch in, I can shrink it. Probably want to get rid of that select to edit text because then it doesn't look like a very real gold bar, does it? Now, I'm still in sort of editing mode. If I turn off AR, I can still walk around. I can I can move my, my piece around. It's only when we press this play button that we're actually running the scene as if we'd see it in a uh, in an application in an app, and you're running the actual AR kit. So when you hand it over to to, to one of your friends and, and and you've built this reality scene out, um, you'd want to press the button so they can experience it in their own reality. So I want to zoom out. I, I I hit this AR button, so now I'm in just the, the normal editing mode. I can tap with one finger on the grid and move it around so I can inspect all different sides of my object. I actually want to tap on this, not that, I want to try to get the select to edit. You can see there's a circle around the select to edit. And if I want to find out more about it, I'll tap on this icon here, the properties inspector. I can see that it has different items for for our look so we can have thickness can be different our font size can be different we have our text material gets rendered differently we can change our text color here as well we can change the background material there's lots more we can tweak with our our uh, text objects but i actually don't want any of these i want to get rid of this thing so what i'm going to do is tap again on my object that's selected Ooh, and I missed so I got to tap again on select to edit and I tap and hold and I just tapped again there so I can either modify it replace it cut it copy it duplicate it, or delete it well I want to delete that so now we just have a gold brick now if I want to tweak it to make it look more realistic I would tap on the gold brick and now that's huge, 10, 10 centimeters, that's pretty huge, even though I'm not entirely sure in centimeters what that is, because my brain operates in inches and feet. So let's make it a little bit smaller. Now this looks like it's floating above my floor. So what I can do is I can either go up here to transform and tap on this item here in my inspector, now I can change my position here, or I can tap on this green arrow to raise it and lower it. Now, because I want to lower it to get it look get it looking like it's on the floor. Because gold, I'm pretty sure, does not float in midair. All right, so now it's sort of snapped into place. So you can see that my Y is still 2.6 centimeters. So maybe it's still a bit high. Maybe we want to say zero for that. And let's see what that looks like. 
Oh, it actually looks like it's lower than the floor now. So we don't want it to be cut in half by our, by our table. So I actually want to bring it back up. Now, if I ever mess up, you saw how it snapped into place. If you ever mess up and you're like, oh no, I like the last position it was in, there's an undo button over here. So you can just hit the undo button and you can see my brick has gone right back up to where I left it at the very top of the tabletop. So there's my gold brick. If I look here, I can see the scale is 276. That's why it's so big. So let's change the scale to just 100. And then let's fix our width and our height. So maybe we'll make it a seven and a half. Make it a little bit bigger. Oops, that's too high. There, that's not a bad gold brick. Oops, I don't want to tilt it that way. Cool, I'm going to bring that down. If I look, that looks like it's pretty well anchored on the ground. Let's verify. Let's go hit the AR button up here. So I move my iPad around. There it is. Oh, that's a much more reasonable size. It's not too big. Now you can see this doesn't look very realistic because most gold bars I know of don't have a green ring around them with some cones. So if we hit the play button, now we see it's, that's, there's our gold bar. Well, I should give us ourselves a bit of shadow here. There's our gold brick. So this is a great way to impress your friends. Maybe you could add a few gold bricks to your desk, send them a picture, just take a screenshot and say, oh yeah, look at this. I got a, I just got a shipment of gold bricks. So if I ever want to get out of this, I would hit the stop button. And that now lets me edit my objects again. So that's, that's how we set up a gold brick. But let's try the demo that we tried running through on Friday. We're going to go grab another object. So I'm going to, again, tap on this guy again. And I get my menu up. So I'm going to actually delete it. We can turn off AR so we don't have to just keep looking at my the, the desk. Now we're going to add a new object. Now I added on Friday, I added a, a rocket ship. You could add anything though. You could go through this whole library here and add any number of things. We can add chess pieces. You could build out a chess board. Dice, lawn darts, marbles. We could add a pool table. We could add a, a field hockey stick, rugby ball, surfboard. I'm going to add this rocket ship though. I, I like this one. All right. So there's our rocket ship. We're going to tap on it and let's see, let's have a look. So there's our transform. Our position is there. Let's go look that the size and scale is 100. Let's see what that looks like in our, in our environment. And again, with this, there's not as many options as the text object that we saw before. We have an option to make it realistic, stylized, or iconic. We can add different colors then. But I'm going to pick the stylized one. I like that one best. So let's try placing this in augmented reality and see how it fits into our environment. So I'm going to hit the AR button. I'm going to move the iPad around a little bit. Now it's a little bit too big. So we'll change the scale. Maybe 50%. So that's not bad. Now we can tap on the rocket and drag it around if we want to place it somewhere. It shows me where the original point was. I dropped it. You can see here in the middle. So if I said, oh, do you know what? I actually want to have, imagine this. I want it to launch off of the, the Bruins dice cup. All right, cool. I'll place it on top of there. Oh, still not 100% on it, are we? 
Maybe we'll move it up a little bit. All right. So I'm going to pause for a second and let you try to place your rocket ship, get it set up on the surface. The more stable structure there, huh? Maybe, you know what, we'll move this off to the side. Or we'll actually make this smaller. Tell you what, let's play around with our, our scene a little bit. So while I'm shrinking this guy, you can add your rocket ship to the to your scene. I'm going to pinch with two fingers and make this a bit smaller. Cool, there we go. And tap on it and move it over. Make sure, maybe we need to move it up a little bit. Boom, there. So we've got our, our Bruins launching pad. Not too bad. So this is good. This is a bit like what we did with the, the gold brick. We've now placed an object in augmented reality. If I go hit the play button, we'll hit the play button here. That's cool. It sticks right on the cup. Or not the cup, That on the, on the Bruins puck. So that's looking kind of cool. I can go all the way around it and look at the different sides. I can go away and come back and it's still there. So that's looking good. Let's hit the stop button. All right, let's see. What else will we do? Let's maybe, just for kicks, let's turn on, let's say, hey, you participate in physics. Now we have an option here uh, of what motion type and we'll see what that does in a second. We can also define the material. So we can say, oh, well, it's lead. Well, that's pretty heavy. Ice, plastic. All of these are going to have to do with how it interacts with the environment. Let's pick plastic because that looks sort of plastic. We can pick up a collision shape. So if we're interacting with other elements in the scene. Now you remember we did our own sort of hit testing and collision code way back in the in our own app at home right we used the distance from and we figured out where two things were on a particular grid ar kit which is what we use when we're coding augmented reality stuff uh, has some really amazing uh contact testing stuff and uh, we'll take a look at that when we actually dive into the code in a couple of weeks time so we could say though, you know what, this is a sphere, it's a box, it's a capsule. But we're gonna let it do automatic. Let's try playing it now, because we've tweaked this property here, the participates in physics property. Let's see what happens. Let's hit the play button. Okay, well, nothing so far. That's good, I guess. I mean, we don't have any other elements in the scene to interact with it, if I tap on it, just by tapping on the thing, nothing happens. Now let's try, I'm going to hit the stop button. And now we're going to try adding a behavior to it. So if you remember the other day, and in fact, you know what, I'm going to add a, a sort of friend here. So we're going to have two rockets, just in case one doesn't work out. So we're going to hit the plus button. And I'm going to add another rocket. So I'm just going to tap on the rocket again. It'll add a new one to my scene. That one's slightly bigger. This gets a little more complicated when we have two things on the screen because it's easier when we just have the one. Oops, now I've scaled both of them down. So we'll hit undo. Oops. Hit X instead of undo. All right, let's put it back in AR just to see what we're doing, where we're at. Okay, cool. There's one of them. Where did my other one go? Oh man, there it is. Holy cow, way too big. All right, let's 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 bring this one onto the launch pad. So I'm gonna tap on it and then drag it over here. I'm gonna also scale it down quite a bit. So we'll make this one a regular size one too. We'll put it at 50%, 50-ish percent. How's that one looking? That's kind of on the ground. So we'll move it up a little bit. 
Now you don't have to add a second one. I'm just adding a second one just to show you some of the issues you might run into. So that one looks not right at all. It's still too big, so let's make it a little bit smaller. Now, now there we go. Now it fits on its launch pad. Cool. That's our backup one over there. If I tap on that one, we should see that the properties over here changed. So it was 33 when I tap on this one. When I tap on this one, it'll be 50. So I'm going to bring that one down too. No sense to be in different sizes. Okay, so now I have these two two objects out here. When I start adding more objects in, I might want to name them. So you can see here, there's a little text field that says object name. So let's call this one backup rocket. So that's backup rocket. And then this is, we'll call this one launch rocket. Now you can name your objects if you want. And again, just like variables, it's really helpful to name them something that means something to you and means something to how it's going to show up in your app. So obviously we want lock, launch rocket to go. Backup rocket's just going to sit there just in case there's an issue. This one doesn't participate in physics. If we tap on this one, this one does participate in physics. So that's another difference between the two. And I'm just tapping between the two of them. But now I want to set it up so that my launch rocket can launch. So I'm going to go tap this button here. This is the behaviors button. And you can see I have AR turned on. So that button's blue. I have my properties pane out. So that button's blue. If I tap on behaviors, that button turns blue as well. And you can't have behaviors open and the properties pane at the same time. So the other one unhighlights. So now we're going to add a behavior to our rockets. So let's go tap the plus button here. Okay, and we have a few options. We have tap and flip, tap and play sound, tap and add force, start hidden, wait and show. And if we scroll up, there are other options, proximity and jiggle and custom. We can explore those other ones at another time, but what we're going to do right now is create our own custom behavior. So we're going to tap on that custom. So if you missed that, we just went to the plus button. We scrolled up to get to the bottom item and we picked custom. And now we have a, an item over here and this, this is a little list view. It says behavior. And we have a trigger box and an action sequence box. So let's add a trigger first. So if I tap on the add a trigger to this behavior box, I get another list little pop-up come up. And again, I can try scrolling, but there's nothing else past notification. We're going to add a trigger so that when we tap our object, that's when our, our action is going to take place. So let's hit tap. And now it's very important. You can see here it says affected objects is none right now. And we have a little box up here that says select the affected objects for the tap trigger. So we want this rocket ship to be tapped and take off. So I'll, I'll tap that one. And you can see it's highlighted green. Now that one's not highlighted because I haven't tapped it. If I go and tap this one, you'll see that this changes to two objects and now they're both green. So I don't want, I don't want my backup one to take off. So I'm going to unhighlight that one and now now that I've done that I can hit done either up here or down here okay now we're gonna add an action sequence so we're gonna add something to have something happen once we tap that that rocket so I'm gonna tap on my box here and it brings up another pop-up and I can scroll through this and there's a lot of options here. We can have something look at the camera. This is very useful for text objects. You can have it wait, play music. What we're going to have it do is we're going to move, rotate and scale by because we want to have this rocket take off along the X axis. 
So let's go tap on Move, Rotate, and Scale By. Okay, so now here's my action sequence added in. I have my trigger. If I tap back on the trigger, it says I have my one object affected, and that's this one here. If I tap on Choose, it'll show me that that's the one highlighted and that this one isn't. So I can hit Done. And now over here on my action sequence, I can see the same thing. There's another box in here that says Affected Objects and it has one object affected. So it's not, if I tap on that, if I hit choose, I can see that it's my launch rocket, not my backup. And let's see, so let's explore this action sequence over here too. So let's hit done, because we're done choosing our objects. And in fact, just to clear things out, I'm gonna take away the AR. So go up here to the AR button Tap on that AR button, and now I can just see my scene with none of the distractions like my desk around me. I'm gonna drag over a chair so I can sit down for a second for this part. So there's my scene. We're looking at the move, rotate, and scale by section. If I tap the screen with two fingers, I can move it up so I can bring my rockets into focus. Now we picked our affected object, we know that deal. This is the duration, so this is how long this action is gonna take place over. Well, one second is gonna be very fast. So maybe we'll give it at least, how about six seconds, roughly. Now we can change the animation type, because basically we're just animating the this rocket ship. Then we can either move it, rotate it, or scale it by a certain amount. And the animation is going to sit, take a certain time. So we've defined the time that it's going to take here. And the framework is smart enough to be able to speed up the animation or slow it down to make it feel a little bit more natural. So let's tap on this ease in, ease out item down here. And I can just tap here and scroll up to see more items in my my action sequence. Right now it's ease in, ease out, so that means it'll slowly start and then go at a decent clip and then slow down as it gets to the end of the, the time it's running for. I actually just want it to ease in to start. Now, now we can define things like the scale. We could make it expand a bit, you know, like we had our fish, we had our whale. In our app at home series, when you tapped on it, it would actually scale up a bit. It would get a bit bigger. Um, we could have this rocket ship get larger when we tap on it. Maybe that's not what we want. In fact, that's definitely not what we want. We could have it rotate. That would be kind of cool. But really what we want to do is we want to have it go up. And right now, it's it says that, okay, I'm going to wind up at the position 25.44 centimeters on the x-axis and it's not gonna change on the Y or Z axis. It's gonna be at zero and zero. That's, that's not at all what we want. So what we can do is we can hit this clear button here on any of these items, clear for rotation, for position. So now it's sitting right about where we have our, you can see it's floating a little bit off the ground because we're gonna expect to put it on our, our uh, Bruins puck. So I want the Y axis to change. So if I tap on the Y, I just tapped in here, I'm going to say, let's go to 500 centimeters. Again, this is in centimeters. Apologize to those people who don't understand centimeters, including myself. And then it changed it to five meters for me. And you can see there's a dotted yellow line now that goes, if we drag around with one finger, we can see that, okay, all right, there it goes, it takes off. So, okay, we've set up a, a behavior, remember, with this item here, we can hide, if we tapped on that again, our behaviors would go away. And now we're just looking at our scene and our different objects. Let's try turning on AR again to see where we're placed, see how we're doing. 
Okay, cool. There we are. I'm going to move our objects because this ship has moved a little bit. So we want to put it on the launch pad. Make sure it's on the launch pad. Okay, not bad. Let's go around the side. Okay, that's looking good. Now, if I tap on it now, the action isn't going to get triggered because I'm not actually previewing the scene. To preview the scene, I have to hit this play button. So I'm going to hit the play button. And again, nothing's happening because I haven't triggered it. I haven't tapped on anything. If I go over to this rocket ship and I tap on it, nothing happens, which is good. It's floating off the ground, which is a little worrying for a backup ship. But if I tap on this one, you should see that there it goes. There's our animation playing out. Now, if we were some kind of evil genius and we wanted to ruin the space program, maybe let's fix this backup one so no one suspects anything weird going on. Let's drag it back down to the bottom. You can see it kind of snaps into place there. So our backup looks normal. But if we were an evil genius and we tapped on the behaviors button, we could make it so that when you tap on this ship to make it take off, it'll make both take off. So we've changed the affected objects here, or we have the affected objects here. We've just got that one selected. That's not selected. So now we can change this one here say choose affected objects here. I'm going to tap on this rocket ship as well. Again, this is me being an evil genius, not probably something you would do. So now you can see that it's changed and it says two objects in the affected objects list. They have the same action type, the same move, scale, rotate by. Let's try previewing what happens here. So I'm going to hit the play button. Okay, so everything looks fairly innocent. There's our, there are our two ships looking good. This one, this one here is all ready to launch. Let's, let's launch it. Okay, there we go, evil genius. We just made both of them take off. So now they haven't got a backup ship anymore. So that's one thing, one thing that you might do, what you might take advantage of. If you say, actually, do you know what? That doesn't make a lot of sense to have both of them take off when one takes off. I'm going to deselect that. You can add other action sequences to this trigger by hitting this little plus button. And it's the same list that we had before. We can move, scale, rotate by. So let's do the same thing. Moves, rotate, scale by. Let's choose which objects are affected. Well, not that one. Because if we tap on the previous one that we defined, it's already moving that particular rocket ship. So actually for this one, I want it to affect just this guy. So I'm going to tap on that ship and hit done. And now it's given me a, a proposed, hey, this is where we should move. I don't want it to do that. So we're going to go back over to this action that we're editing. We're going to make it, you know, make the duration a bit longer. So like six seconds or so. We're going to scroll up. We're going to do the same thing. We're going to ease in. So you saw I tapped on this ease in, ease out. And these options showed up. I can scroll along by dragging these items a bit like our automatic completions in playgrounds. I'm going to tap on ease in. scroll up and change clear the position I don't want it to move at all but what I do want it to do is maybe rotate so let's have it rotate let's have it rotate 180 okay and I can the nice thing about this is I can get a preview and I can see that okay well it's gonna go underground that's that's not what I want so let's clear that because that's obviously a mistake let's hit clear for rotation Oh, that's not what I wanted. I want to hit clear. So we'll move this thing out of the way and hit clear. Let's change it on the y-axis. Let's go one, eight, zero. 
Okay, well, it doesn't look a whole lot different, but let's see. Let's see what happens when we play it. I'm going to hit the play button. And I'm going to tap on my rocket. Okay, nothing happened with this guy. My rocket is still taking off to its ceiling. Oh, it's actually happening after the other one. Okay. All right, so maybe that's something that I have to consider. Then I would say, all right, I know that these are going to get run in sequence. So once that other animation is done, once this rocket ship is done taking off, then this one runs its action. So maybe I need to tweak that. We'll play around with that a little bit tomorrow. I hope you've had time to, to set up your, your rocket. I'm going to hit stop here. And tweak your behaviors a little bit. Remember, you can set your, set your trigger, set your action sequence. And we set two of them in this case. We turn into a little bit of an evil genius, which is kind of worrying. Um, but we're going to come back tomorrow and play around with Reality Composer a little bit more. There's a ton to do uh, in this application. I think um, there's a lot that we can kind of learn from it and a, a lot that we can build. We can get very creative with this, um, this whole thing. So we'll be back tomorrow working with Reality Composer a bit more. I hope you enjoyed that today. Um, hope it was a bit easier to follow. Uh, and if it wasn't, I'll have the link to the the demonstration that Apple has, they have a really good tutorial where they walk you through that very work that we just did now, um, going right to launching a rocket off um, for their demonstration and their introduction to, to get to know Reality Composer. Um, hope you enjoyed today and um, we'll see you tomorrow.